Well, you could pack your away bag because home ice is held and it's now a best of three. Tampa Bay holding home ice and winning this one in game four by a score of four to one. Story of the night, the big man between the pipes. Andre Vasilevsky saw 35, stopped 34, only allowed a power play goal in the third period to this New York offense that couldn't get much going here in game four. Tallying early was the fourth line and Patrick Maroon and then both Steven Stamkos and Nikita Kucherov finding the back of the nets. Tampa Bay now 10 and one in postseason play when those two men score in the same game. And you can see, see Colorado tell them to kick up their feet because we are tied at two. And for more on game four, we now welcome in CBS NHL analyst Alan May. A truly dominant performance by the Bolts here, Alan, in game four. Enough to shift Big Mo, it feels like, in this series. What impressed you most about Tampa, Tampa's performance on Tuesday night? I thought it was a defensive clinic, and their coach, John Cooper, he's all about defense first. When you think of Kucherov and Stamkos and Hedman, you're thinking offense, but this team really understands that it's all about a defense first and, and sacrifice next on how to play team defense. In the very first game of this series, they had been off nine days. They had some rust. They were a little bit slow. They were very slow. They were lethargic. But what they've done in the last few games, you know, taking away the middle of the ice, and you'll see on this play right here, there's nowhere to go. And the shots that do come, they're from the perimeter. That's really easy for Andre Vasilevsky. They're blocking, they're checking the puck. They're not going after the body chasing big hits, but everyone is selling out to block shots. Sticks in lanes, Vasilevsky's just got to protect the post on these shots, and then muscling it out and, and being a, a, a team that's a five-man unit on defense. That's more important than being a five-man unit on offense. I just love what Tampa's done because the New York Rangers are one of the fastest, most exciting teams in the National Hockey League, and they virtually eliminated all their top players at five-on-five five tonight. So an excellent strategy by John Cooper. And when you have championship-caliber players, it's easy to get those players to implement because they've been there, they've done it before, two, the last two Stanley Cups in a row. Tampa's done it with an all-out gritty defensive performance. Yeah, they lured them into their type of matchup here on Tuesday night. It was billed as a face-off of heavyweight net miners. You make a great point there on life made easy for Vassy between the pipes here in game four. He was a little loose with the blocker in Manhattan, but didn't allow an even strength goal in 120 minutes of ice time here in Tampa. What have you observed in his game specifically here in game four? Yes, life was made easy, but he was still on the mark when he needed to be. Well, when you look at this game, and the tail was really the high danger chances, and through the first two periods, Tampa only had 15 shots, but they led in high dangers. Over the mm -hmm. course of this game, at five on five at even strength, the high danger chances were 13 to six in favor of the Tampa Bay Lightning. That means that they kept the shots to the perimeter. So Vasilevsky, you know, he had to find some through traffic, but he does a great job. He's not erratic. You know, he's compact down low. He blocks the five hole. Pucks don't go under his pads. And he really has shown his team that you just take care of the plays down the middle of the ice. I'll take care of the flank. And he did an incredible job the last two games. And he outplayed Shesterkin tonight. Shesterkin led in some soft goals. Uh, people won't like to hear that. These are the two best goaltenders in the National Hockey League by my analysis. And tonight, Shesterkin was off of his game big time. Uh, let's talk about the momentum in this series, because as you said, they're standing fr tall in front of Vasilevsky right now. Few high pressure chances for the Rangers. New York appeared to have the jump for the first, let's say, eight periods of this series. That changed in the third on Sunday night and then carried over into this one, it appeared. Where's New York's rush lacking right now? Right now, it's five-on-five five play. Uh, they're not getting to the middle of the ice. They're not doing enough there. And when you look, the guys that have gotten them here so far, it's Zibanejad has, has been a force. He, mm. he was relegated to a very average looking tonight. So I, I look at what the New York Rangers, they're going to have to figure it out. Less D to D passes, more quick quick ups down the you know down the ice, and let Adam Fox control the game for them and, and start playing more you know north south type of offense because that is their game is to get up and down the ice. Right now they're making a D to D pass, which enables Tampa to put five men in the middle of the ice between the two blue lines, and that's exactly what Tampa wants to do. When we saw Tampa at their weakest was in that Toronto series when. Toronto made them look very slow, and it was quick ups, it was fast breaks up the ice, and Tampa was getting beat in race, races. Now, Tampa's got to figure it out. We've just got to back off at certain times. Don't forecheck, don't chase hits. 
you know, don't try to be too physical. I thought they were trying to do that a, a little too much in that very first series against Toronto. Now they're backing off. Instead of taking a hit or making a hit, they're backing off and they're checking the puck, but they've got five guys in the way. And it's very, very frustrating when you're an offensive team to try to go through five players. There's no momentum. New York Rangers are not a dump and chase hockey team. So when they have to do it, they don't really have a plan. And their players, you know, they got away with it all season long where they're just going down the ice as fast and as quick as they can and basically having their way inside the offensive zone, turning players inside and out. Right now, Tampa is doing a great job of making it the Tampa Bay Lightning style of play. And right now, that's why they're back in this series 2-2. Yeah, I know Rangers fans feel like they didn't hear the names of Benajet or Kreider all that much here in Game 4. Another name they didn't hear was Ryan Strom, who was a scratch in this one, tried to go uh, in morning skate. Philip Heedle also was an early exit. So now we're talking about two of the Rangers' top three centers in question moving forward, Alan. But onward they go. Who do you give the edge right now in this series? Well, it's been a home-and-home home series, but I really do believe that Tampa right now, they have the lesser of the injuries. They're, they're used to life without Braden Point. And, you know, we don't know how far he is, you know, to, to getting clo mm -hmm. how close he is to getting to play. But they've had players stepping in and stepping up and doing the right thing. And, you know, the, the, tonight Riley Nash gets a jersey, and he, he was kind of flawless when he was out there. He was just checking the puck. And, and they know that when they don't have their best player, that they have to play a different game. What I love is Kucherov. Has he ever risen his level of play the last few games? This beautiful breakaway goal on a perfect pass from Andre Pallad, who just continues to wow everyone. Uh, those guys, Stamco, stepping up and making sure they're creating offense and finding when they have those golden opportunities. You know, that empty net by Stamco right there, he just pats it over the goal line. You know, a lot of players rip it too hard. You know, they shoot it right into the goal tender, they hit a post. But those two guys have ice in their veins. They've been there. They scored big goals in the Stanley Cup Finals, and uh, they are—they're just you know a proven commodity at what you can do in the playoffs. So a lot of confidence with the Tampa Bay Lightning and players stepping in. And Kucherov, the last couple of games, people talk about his body language. Well, I think his body language is amazing, and I think his, his hockey smarts—he's uh, schooling everyone and showing them this is how you play smart, intelligent hockey. They're, they're giving him a little, and he's making a lot out of it. You had a fourth line tally as well, and all is well for the Tampa two time. Alan May, we'll talk soon. Thank you. All right, here's a look at that schedule. Moving forward, you will get at least two more next coming your way on Thursday at MSG, as this series is now a best of three shifting back to New York with the Rangers still in possession of home ice advantage, but looking for some jump come Thursday, then it's back to Tampa on set. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.